coming into my life as a uh, pastor's wife, that kind of thing. And we struck. You see how this is what this conversation is about. No, I'm You see how that. he started and he said, you came into my life. This is what this conversation is about. Keep going, honey. Was, Keep going. Are we still alive? Yes. No, that's not <laughs> what I meant to say. I don't like that. I thought you were like cutting us off. You no, said cut. No, I didn't. Oh, okay, start over there. I'm sorry. No, don't start over. No, we have to start over. No, that was no, good. No, no, yes. no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> cut, start over. No, right. don't start over. Well, hi, I'm Bishop. And I'm Dr. Steph. And thank you so much for tuning in to our channel. We appreciate you so much, and we're excited to have you connected today. No matter how you've heard about this channel, you're here, I believe, at the right time, because I believe something's gonna happen amazing in your life. We are just so geeked about many of you who have commented on this page and yeah, shared and, so and many amazing And told us what you would love to hear from us. And It's been crazy. Yeah. We're, we're excited. We read those comments too. And uh, so many of you have just been uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, we appreciate that. We want to make sure you subscribe. Subscribe right now to this page and also like, comment, share, get engaged in this great community because our life, our journey, and our truth is about you. And uh, we appreciate you so much. I'm excited because you know, today we get to talk about something pretty interesting. Um, remember when we first met and, you know, you were coming into my life as a uh, pastor's wife, that kind of thing, and we struck... You see how this is what this conversation is about. No, I'm You see how that. he started and he said, you came into my life. This is what this conversation is about. Keep going, honey. Was, Keep going. Are we still alive? Yes. No, that's not what I meant to say. I don't like that. I thought you were like cutting us off. You no, said cut. No, I didn't. Oh, okay, start over there. I'm sorry. No, don't start over. No, we have to start over. No, that was no, good. No, no, yes. no, 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 Yeah. <laughs> cut, start over. No, right. don't start over. All right, okay, so yeah. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about, right? Like, I'm a pastor and she's coming into my world and I'm like, this is the problem, right? We're talking about how do you maintain your identity in a relationship yes. and the refusal of losing me in, in we. we. And so <laughs> this is going to be fun, boy. I mean, this is, this is awesome. you know. And so the first conversation that we had clearly was when he said that many, many years ago, I kind of looked at him and said, what do you mean your, your world? <laughs> like me moving into your world, um, no, sir, there's no such thing as your world. If we're c deciding to come together, we're coming together to create our new normal, our new world. There's no me coming to your world, just like you're not coming to my world. Point number one. Wow, that's a good point. <laughs> that, that's a very good point because I think that for many couples, I think we really have to understand when you come together, you're two individuals. Yeah. You have career paths. We had career paths. Yeah. I, as a, I, as a pastor in my own bubble, doing my own thing. She is a physician doing her own thing. Yeah. Yeah. And these two worlds collide. We talk about marriage not being the merger, uh, merger of two, two lives. Histories. Merger of two lives, but being the collision of two histories. Of two histories right. right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, it's, uh, it's incredibly important to really anchor in on yeah. how do you really maintain your identity. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I had to have was a come to Jesus moment. Mm -hmm. And that was, I had to really look at her and say, look, I know there's a lot of, you know, preconceived notions about what a first lady should be, mm -hmm. pastor's wife should be. Mm -hmm. But I looked at her and said, do you? Yeah, yeah. What was did. that like? Like, you know? It was a huge relief, right? Because here I am minding my own business, doing my own thing, having my own life as a physician up in Boston. And then we have this amazing relationship. But when you're courting you're in your own little bubble. Like you're not worried about the rest of the world. It was just the two of us. And <laughs> then you realize, wait, this is going somewhere. What does this mean? Like he's doing this and he's on TV and he's here and he's there and I'm me. And I will always be me, unapologetically me. Thanks. How will I be received? And be, him being able to stand up and look me in the face and say that, 
um, just gave me tremendous relief. Um, and ultimately, I knew that no matter what, he would always have my back in terms of allowing me, not allowing me, but like giving me the permission to be who I know that I can be. Like, just like you, like no one can be a better you right. than you, yeah. right? And one of the things that we talked about is, or one of the things I had to come to terms with, because it's not always easy, right? Like you're you're walking into these spaces, you're trying to make sure that your spouse is you know, represented well, that you're represented well, but you also understand that sometimes there are uh, concessions, ex- yeah, concessions yeah. or expectations yeah. to go yeah. with these various roles. Right. And so for me, it was important to be able to be given the permission to, I'm losing my- Yeah, well, no, to, to be given the permission to be you. Authentically who you were. Yeah. And for me, yeah. it was about, I recognize often the expectations that yeah. are levied upon yeah. a pastor's wife. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, is she going to wear hats? Yeah. Is, you know, is she going to be over the women's ministry? Is she going to be this or that? All and of I'm those. Like, All those things. All I'm like, of she's those like, things. I don't wear hats. She's like, I'm not wearing a hat. I mean, literally. Like, she was, you know, when I met her, she was wearing pants, suits. Nothing, about, nothing wrong with that. Nothing, nothing about, wrong with that. It's never about other people yeah. and what other people are yeah. doing or other people's traditions. You love that. You respect, yeah, respect that for it. them. Absolutely. But you have to honor who you are as an individual. And coming in, I just felt like if God called me to be his spouse, then he called me. And he knew he knows me better than I know myself. So for me to morph and to someone that I'm clearly not to appease this imaginary image that I think that people may have in their mind is not only me not being authentic to myself, it's also not being authentic to God who made me nor the assignment that God has on my life because that was an assignment that was given to me, the me that I am, not the me that I'm trying to be. And this is not just about being a first lady or a physician or what have you. It's about any relationship. When two people are coming together, the two of you are coming together, not the images that people have about who you are. The real you are coming together. So that's number two, honor individuality. Yeah. That's big. Because that was the sense of you had to honor my individuality of who I was and I had to honor yours. And I think when you think about your relationships out there, I think there's a, there's this, there's this idea again, that we do have to morph into the images and preconceived notions that people Mm -hmm. have for us. And it's, it's, it's really setting you up for failure because you're not going to feel authentic in those spaces. You're going to feel like, wow, I got to go put on to be that for them. But then what makes the relationship work is when we can be comfortable and support each other in our individuality, right? Mm -hmm. And then you walk into a space, I'm like, hey, she's with me and I'm with her and this is who Mm -hmm. we are Mm -hmm. authentically. You know, I'm not a traditional kind of bishop. She's not a traditional first lady, but we're perfectly cool with that, right? We're totally cool with that. And we honor everybody else's decisions and their individuality, but what works for our relationship yeah. is what works for us. You know, one of the other things I think is important, I think in this discussion, when you think about supporting each other, right, in terms of, yeah. you know, not necessarily um, competing, but actually supporting each other. Sometimes I've seen in relationships where I know when a person, yeah, mm-hmm. a person is, <laughs> is, 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 is on a trajectory mm-hmm. uh, that the other person in the relationship is feeling some kind of way about mm-hmm. and all of a sudden their insecurities come out and it's mm-hmm. like, why you got to do all that? Mm-hmm. What's up? And in mm-hmm. fact, when you honor re- that person's individuality, yeah. you have to support that part too. Well, the reality is in a relationship, you know whether or not it's the right one for you <laughs> based on many things, but one of the things would be if that person is supportive of who you are and who you're trying to be, right? If God has already spoken into your life and has you on this trajectory and then you meet up, because again, you know, the reality is many of us are getting married later in life and we're established, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if I'm trying to get from point A to point B and I was trying to do that way before I met you, (laughs) right? (laughs) And I'm doing well for myself by myself. If we're coming together, who are you to say, 
Why you got to do all that? Yeah. Why does it take all that? You Aren't you too old for that? What are you trying to do that for? As opposed to putting your energy and effort behind me and saying, hey, boo, I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. Yeah. If that's what you want. Then that's what I want for you. Let's go get it together, right? Because when people are not supportive of you and your dreams and your goals and your aspirations, that is a red flag. Red flag. I mean, here's, here's number three. Watch this. Don't sacrifice your dream on the altar of a relationship. You don't have to do that. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to give yeah. up your dream. If you have to sacrifice your dream and your vision mm -hmm. just to be with somebody, that is an unhealthy thing. Yeah. Everything that she is and things that she yeah. wants to do, like we support each other. Now, what's important in this is that we, we talk about that moment in which she decreases yes. and I increase. So there's seasons yeah. for everything. There you go. Talk about it. It can't yeah. just be, I want to do this and this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Especially if you guys are together now. Like if this is you and you're coming together, then that's kind of a different situation. Right. You guys have to figure out this is the right season for you guys to be together, first right. of all. Right? But if you're already in that relationship and now suddenly you have these dreams or goals or aspirations, or maybe there are things that were, you know, buried in you and you're, you know, those are coming to fruition now. It's respectful of the relationship to decide on the timing, right? Maybe you have children. Maybe you just got married. Maybe your spouse just got a promotion. Like you have to figure out, again, what works for you. What worked for us may not work for you in this season, yeah. right? And so you, it's really about sitting down, having that honest conversation, right. what you're trying to do, and then figuring out how it fits into the puzzle of your life. Exactly. One person may be working hard. Other mm -hmm. person is like, I'm going to do this while you do that. Yeah. When you get through doing that, then I'll go to school mm -hmm. and you hold me down. Mm -hmm. It's a compromise. And I think that's that's yeah. incredibly important yeah. to think about how do we compromise. It's partnership. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is about partnership. And I think that's what it and makes And I sense. think also making sure that you're with people and have people around you that think in terms of we, right? So if it's my season to decrease while he increases, when he wins, we win, mm -hmm. right? When I win, we win. Yeah. It's not, you know, him winning and then me trying to one-up him and he's trying to one-up me. If we're competing, that's not our relationship. You're not in a relationship working together. Just think if you're trying to climb a mountain. If you've got two people who are supposed to be partners climbing a mountain and we're competing, we're going to fall at some point and we will fail. And so making sure that we're lifting as we're climbing and we're being supportive. And then the other thing is, if you're that person who it's your season to increase while your spouse or significant other has to take, you know, a side seat or be the supportive cast, make sure that you're cognizant of that. Make sure that you're thoughtful. Make sure that you're supporting them in whatever their that role is. Um, make sure that you're mindful of the words that you're choosing um, because this is not... It's not always easy, especially if you're a type A personality, to take a back seat, even though you know it's the right season to do that. You know, one of the things that uh, I think is very important to talk about, and it's probably going to be a very transparent moment, and I want to just share it and own it mm. publicly. Like, one of the things, and this is, a, I think, as we move to this fourth principle, I think one of the things that I, I was guilty of in the relationship is, is really not affirming some of the things that she enjoyed doing. Uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, there are things that I fundamentally just don't like doing, just flat out the gate. I don't like skiing, but she was a skier. She likes to go skiing. I don't like skiing. Um, she played golf. She very adventurous. She did things like riding horses and traveling all over the all, world. All over the world. And my schedule and things was, you know, preventing us from doing a lot of those things. And so later on in our marriage, and I began to realize those things that were important to her had to be important to me. And even if I did not go, I had to create or if you didn't opportunities. Like it. <laughs> I had to create opportunities right. for her to experience those things because it, I watched a part of her die uh, because she did not have an opportunity. Like I, I used to have a passion about these things, but my life is caught in this in vortex. This, this vortex yeah. And I can't do the things that give me joy. Ooh, and I'm so, getting emotional. Yeah, right. But <laughs> well, that's real, right? And yeah. I think that sometimes what we do is we forget about the person who who had all these extraordinary and exciting yeah. things they did before they got with you. Then they get with you and all of a sudden life happens and yeah. you forget that this person yeah. used to travel, do these things, and now they don't do that anymore. They can't connect with their friends like they used to and they're in this space and it's tough. So you have to be intentional about yeah. creating 
space and grace mm -hmm. for these things to happen. That, that's, yeah. that's how I'm going to set this fourth principle up. Create space and grace for these things to happen. And I would also say sometimes we allow ourselves to get into those vortexes of life where we lose ourselves, yeah, right? Yeah. Whether it's because you just got married or maybe you're a new parent or maybe you're a parent of five kids and don't have time. Yeah. Like it's very important to figure out again how not to lose yourself. Like what are those things that bring you joy? What are those things that help you, you know, get up in the morning with a smile on your yeah, face? Yeah. What are those things that you're passionate about? Maybe it's taking an online class. Maybe it's just going for a walk. Maybe it's, you know, catching up with a friend, even yeah. if you can't do it in person, yeah. catching up by the phone. Like yeah. doing those simple things that help you reconnect with who you are, even with this rat race, the, you know, the vortex of a crazy life or lifestyle, like you have to honor yourself. And sometimes even, let's say you're not in a relationship. Yeah. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the relationship, right. but just with life, with life right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I just remember going to medical school for the first time, the first day, the um, uh, president of the school got up and he looked at the class and he was like, you know, some of you guys won't be here basically. They always give you that speech. Some of you guys won't be here, you know, in four years, whatever. But then he fast forwarded it to don't lose yourself. You know, if you are going after your dreams and going after your goals, yeah, you know, you're going to be grinding. Yeah, you're going to be focused. But don't forget those little things along the way that make you unique, that make you who you are. Because if you look up in five years, you've got that degree, or you've got that great job, or you've got that new business going, but you've lost all those unique qualities that have made you you, that is a tragedy because now you've got what you want, but you've lost who you are at the core in trying to get it. So don't let that be your story. And you know, one of the things that uh, is incredibly important is that you you don't make the other person feel guilty yeah. for desiring to do those things. Yeah. Sometimes that can yeah. be tough for like that, the mm -hmm. guilt of, I need to get away, I, I miss my friends, yeah. or I need something yeah. to feed my That's spirit. Big. And you're like, yeah. you're gonna go now, why? <laughs> you know, and, and you have to really understand that person needs to be, something yeah. needs to feed their spirit. I've yeah. watched her yeah. go with her girlfriends yeah. and she comes back, she says, that fed my spirit, fed And I my had soul. to, even as a wife, yeah you know, learn that with him, right? And so, yeah, he would travel. Testify, <laughs> come on. Yeah, he would travel and he'd be gone all the time and then he'd be like, well, now I gotta go see my friend so-and-so. And I'd be like, but you've been gone for like five days. What do you mean you're leaving? You know, and he had to understand the idea of balancing. Like you give our relationship what it needs first oh, yeah. and our family what it needs first. And yeah, I don't care what you do. You can yeah. go around to the moon if you want. But as long as you're taking care of home yeah. and our family, and our kids and what we need. As long as you're prioritizing us appropriately, then yeah, you want to go on a fishing trip, you want to go to you know your boys' trip, you, uh, go for it yeah. because I know that that feeds you. Yeah. But there are there's a method to the madness That's in right. terms of how you prioritize your family. That's right. And so you have to do that, right? You have to you have to take care. Let this be number five, and we're gonna take care of Jerusalem. Before you go to Judea, <laughs> you'll get it. <laughs> Take care of home before you try to go and do all the other stuff. I think that's important. So for us, it is important that yeah. relationships are strengthened. And yeah. a part of that is understanding your own identity. When you come together as two people, you came yeah. together whole. She was a whole person. I was a whole person. Not half and half. Not making half and one half. Home. We were yeah. whole. And we had dreams and aspirations mm -hmm. and passions. And those things should not be sacrificed on the altar of just being together. Or you die slowly. Something in yeah. you begins to die. And often at and the you very grow, core. You grow resentful. Yeah, at the very mm -hmm. core of a lot of discontented relationships is people feel like they're not happy because it's not so much I'm not happy with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy because of what I lost to be with you. Yeah. And you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to give up all of that if it's yeah. the right person. It can be a marvelous connection. Yeah. We've learned this. We've yeah. trialed an error. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely it's not, learned yeah, over time. It's not going to happen yeah. overnight. So I really yeah. hope that what we've shared has really helped you. I hope that uh, you continue to, to focus and have the real conversations with your, your spouse, your, your, your significant other, and say, what is it that you like to do? Mm -hmm. What is it that you haven't done in a while that mm -hmm. feeds you? How can I support you in that? Yeah. What dreams do you have? Do you want to write a yeah. book? How can I support yeah. you? How can, yeah. I, how can I celebrate you and then you celebrate me? How yeah. can we create a schedule that you know increases and decreases and supports each other? That's what this is yeah. all about. So, because one thing is certain, this one is going to be authentically and unapologetically 
Stephanie Hale Walker. I Sorry. promise you that. <laughs> and this one's going to be Joseph Paul Walker III without apology yeah. and without worrying about the expectations yeah. of people. Ultimately, yeah. at the end of the day, we got to live with each other. And that's what counts. So it's been great, right? Exactly. Ah, thank y'all so much for tuning in once again. And listen, we want to make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you comment. And listen, follow her. I'm telling you, y'all got to follow her. Dr. Steph, right here. Follow Dr. Steph on Instagram. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 And we would love to hear from you, connect with us, and let us know what you think. Let us know how you're doing. We got some cool stuff coming too, so stay tuned. We cannot wait to share it with you. So until next time, I'm Bishop. And I'm Dr. Steph. Peace out.